టు మై యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ ఐఎమ్ మేఘన వైద్య ఫ్రమ్ శ్రీ వెంకటేశ్వర కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ బెంగళూరు ఫ్రమ్ ది డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ కంప్యూటర్ సైన్స్ అండ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ థర్డ్ సెమిస్టర్ సిఎస్సి బ్రాంచ్ నవ్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ ఈస్ డేటా స్ట్రక్చర్ టుడే ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు టాక్ అబౌట్ ద టాపిక్ హీస్ డేటా స్ట్రక్చర్స్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ అప్లికేషన్స్ ఇన్ సి ఫస్ట్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు గివ్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ అబౌట్ డేటా స్ట్రక్చర్స్ Data structures are predetermined ways of arranging memory locations into which logically related data is insertion easy handling. They are classified into primitive and non-primitive data structures. Primitive data structures are basic data structures which cannot be broken down into simpler data types. Various non-primitive data types can be further simplified as they are built using primitive data types. Arrays Array is a combination of similar data items which are collected together. Each element is referred to by their index or subscript. The index always starts with the value 0 and ends with an 1. For example, consider an array of 4 employees in an organization. Array can be classified into two types, one dimensional array and multidimensional array. First one, one dimensional array. It is a linear and contiguous list consisting of related and similar data types. Consider the image shown below. It is a 1D array representation with address. The technical way of array definition includes a variable type and a name with a size which tells how many data items the array will contain. The syntax of array declaration. Type array underscore name of size. Multidimensional array. A multidimensional array is a type of array which has two or more dimension to define itself. A multidimensional array can be declared with the number of rows and the number of columns it contains. The syntax of multidimensional array declaration, data type and array name of number of rows and number of columns. To find the number of elements present in the array, we need to multiply the number of rows with the number of columns. The general form of representing a 2D array is Operations on array Array operations are the fundamental changes and updation done by the array. The fundamental operations that can be done on arrays including the following Insertion, deletion, display, sorting, searching First one, insertion When an array consists of n elements, if there is a requirement for adding a few more elements to the array for better and efficient handling a new element can be added to the array. When insertion of a new element to an array is necessary, the size of the array will be increased. The condition for insertion of element is that the array should not be full. Here, 35 is the new element to be inserted into the array at position 4. All the elements are shifted one place starting 4 till the size of the array. The element that is to be inserted 35 at the position 4 in, is inserted and the size of the entire array is increased by 1. Deletion Deletion is the process of removing a value from an array. It basically is like insertion in an opposite kind of a way. Deletion at a specified position deletes a particular element from the position and then covers the gap by shifting the elements one position backwards. Here the element to be deleted from the array is 20 at the position 2. Starting from 2 all the elements will till size of array or shifted one position to the left to cover the gap of the deleted element. The effective size of the array is then reduced by 1. Display Display is the process of traversing through the array and printing all the elements till the end. The display operation can be performed on an array only when there is at least one element in an array. The counter high iterates through all the elements in the array till it reaches the end of the array and prints all the elements one by one. Sorting Sorting is a process where in an important task is performed that sorts the element of an array in a certain order. Sorting of data in an array can be performed in various ways. For example, elements in an array can be arranged in low to high fashion or from high to low fashion or based on any other particular condition. Sorting involves two main steps which is comparing two items and swap these two items on basis of the condition specified. It keeps repeating until all the elements in an array is sorted and the condition is satisfied. Bubble sort 
In bubble sort, it compares the first two elements of the array and if the first is greater than the second, it interchanges them. It then proceeds for every pair of adjacent elements till the end of the array. It again starts with the first two elements in the array until all the elements are sorted in the array. Insertion sort. It works on the principle by taking elements from the array one by one and then placing them in their correct position into the new sorted array. To summarize, an insertion sort requires n1 passes where n is the number of elements in an array. Searching Searching is the process in which an element is searched in an array. Searching can effectively be performed in two ways. Linear search and another one is binary search. Linear search is a simple and quick quick sim algorithm. It is a linear search which is performed on array of numbers that are sorted or unsorted. It checks each and every number of the array to search it for a specified number. If the number is found then that number is printed and tells the user that it is found. For an array with the n numbers the easiest iteration is when the number to be searched is in the first position. Here only one iteration is needed if the value is not present in the list, it takes n comparisons, which is going to take time. Step 1. Initialize variable i to 1. Step 2. Check if i greater than n, which is the size of array. If it is then, then go to step 7. Step 3. If array and the value of x are equal, then go to step 6. Step 4. Increment i to i plus 1. Step 5. Go back to step 2. Step 6. If the element is found, print it and go to step 8. Step 7. If not found, print element is not found. Step 8. Exit. Another one, binary search. Binary search is one of the searching algorithms where in the array is divided into two sets with a mid number for the array. The key to be searched is first compared to the mid element. If the element is present in the mid position, print it is found. If the element is not found in the middle, it is checked if the element is present in the lower half of the array or the other half of the array. And the same process is repeated until the element is found. Step 1. Take the input from the user the element to be searched. Step 2. Identify the middle element is in the array. Step 3. Compare the search element while the middle element in the array. Step 4. If the element is the middle element, print found and exit. Step 5. If the key is not matching, then check if the key is in the lower half of the array or in the upper half. Step 6. If the search is successful in the lower half of the array, repeat the steps 2, 3, 4 and 5 for the lower half of the array. Step 7. If the element to be searched is larger than the middle element. Repeat steps 2, 3, 4 and 5 for the higher half of the array. Step 8. Repeat the process until the element is found. Step 9. If the element is not found, print the element is not there in array. Applications of array. Array can be used to store similar data types in a sequential order. Can be used while storing and sorting elements. All matrix operations can be performed on arrays. Stacks. A stack is an arrangement of elements which can be represented using arrays where both insertion and deletion takes place at the same end. This is the last in first out principle. The stack follows LIFO principle. According to 6, in stack all insertions and deletions of data items are done at one end called top. Stack operations are the operations that are performed on stacks. These operations are push and pop. Inserting an element into stack is called push operation. Only one element can be inserted at a time and it has to be inserted only from the top of the stack. When the value of variable topped is equal to size of the array, further insertion cannot take place. Further trying to insert an element to a stack results in an overflow of the stack. Stack contains after inserting 3 elements 7, 8, 9. Deleting an element from stack is called pop operation. Only one element can be deleted at a time and it has to be deleted from the top of the stack. 
Once the stack is empty, it is not possible to delete any element. Further trying to delete an element from the stack results in an underflow. Performing pop operation when stack already contains 7, 8, 9 and it is shown below. Applications of stack When mathematical expression in program is written in the program, we use infix expression. Using stacks, these expressions will be converted into equivalent machine instructions by the compiler. We can efficiently convert the expression from infix to postfix, infix to prefix, postfix to infix, postfix to prefix, postfix to infix and postfix to prefix using stacks. Stacks can be used to evaluate expressions. It can mainly be used to evaluate postfix expression and prefix expression. Under mechanism in text editors, backtracking and language processing are some applications of stacks. Queues. Queue is a linear data structure which follows first in first out principle, which means that the first element which will be the inserted into the queue will be first element to be deleted. According to Haidt, a queue is an ordered collection of items where the addition of new item happens at one end and removal happens from the other end. To make the operations on queues easier, we keep track of the first element of the queue is front and the last element as rare. Operations on queues NQ and DQ NQ. Adding an element into queue is known as NQ DQ. Deleting an element from the queue is known as DQ. To make NQing and DQing simple, we use some additional operations like is full and is empty to check if the queue is empty or full. Types of queues. First one simple queue. In simple queues, the NQ operation is carried out at the front end of the queue and DQ operation is carried out the rear end and it is strictly follows the first in first out. Double ended queue. Priority queues. In priority queues, each element will be assigned with a priority number and the element with the highest priority number will be the first element to be dequeued. If two elements in the queue have the same priority, then those elements will be dequeued according to their order in the queue. Next one, circular queues. Theoretically, even if the queue has space available, it is not be possible to enqueue once the end of the memory allocated for the queue is reached. To avoid this situation, we use circular queues which enable us to use the space of the previously DQ elements. Applications and according to 8 and 9 queues can be used for implementing breadth first search, traversal in graphs, handling interrupts in real time systems, call holding in call center systems till her service representative is free. FIFO principle of queues can be used in CPU scheduling of Instructions on first come first serve basis. It can be used in automated appointment administration systems to mimic the real world queues. Other applications of queues are handling interrupts, prints pooling, transmitting packets of information over a computer network. And finally the conclusion. In this paper we have explained the different types of data structures and their operations. It also clearly depicts the implementation of each data structure with the help of diagrams. It also explains how each data structure is applied in the real world. Data structures are the best arrows to have in the, our cure of computer science. They have their own advantages and disadvantages. Fortunately, the number of advantages exceed the number of disadvantages. It is important to choose the correct type of data structures for our problem statement. Thank you for watching guys. Please like and share the video.